Hey, you guys, how you doing? It's Henry and Motors and Blowers. Welcome to another snowmobile episode. Yes, the snowmobile project is pretty much finished. But I wanted to try something that was very unique. Because we don't get any significant snow here on Long Island, New York anymore. It is uh, mid-December already, and we haven't had even a glance of any snow. Although it's been cold enough. So if you coincide cold weather and moisture, we'll get snow. As a matter of fact, we just had a big storm, a uh, rainstorm recently. If it was below temperature, we'd have a big snowstorm. But I don't anticipate us getting enough snow to at least cover the roads with a significant amount of snow, at least a couple of inches, so they could support skis and a snowmobile riding on the street. So I thought to myself, self, these skis are pretty easy to remove from the spindles. What if I concocted a way to put some wheels on it? <laughs> so I got these really cool tractor wheels. They were the front tractor wheels of this machine that I got maybe three years ago. If you guys are long subscribers, you'll remember the episode where I picked up a old Craftsman LT4000, the little one, and it had a, a camouflage U.S. Marine Corps paint job. It was a green camouflage one. It came with a trailer. It was really cool, but the engine blew, so I got rid of it. I put another engine on it, and I sold it for like $300, something like that. But I kept the wheels. The front wheels were these thin tractor wheels, and uh, I just put in an inner tube in here. I didn't want to show you guys because I was cursing the whole time, you know? Anyway, so uh, looks like we have two inflated tractor tires. And I used to have a jungle gym in the backyard. My kids are big now, so I dismantled it. And it, I have a bunch of galvanized steel bolts, huge ones, right? That goes right through here. I mean, there's a little bit of, you know, it's not the same diameter, but I could put some kind of a sleeve or a spacer in there or whatever. I could remove this ski, and there's two holes that hold the ski to the uh, post, right? I could simply just slip this into the hole and you know put some spacers in there, secure it with a bolt, and it would be free rolling. As long as it didn't make the hole bigger by moving around, but I just wanted to try it out, you know what I mean? Uh, right now, I can't move this thing at all because it's on skis, and this thing is really heavy. So, I mean, I have these dollies on there, but these dolly wheels are super small too, and you know, you. If you roll it and stuff, it, it just won't roll. So I wanted to try the wheels, you know. At least I could move this around and at least drive it, sort of. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to give you a close-up look at exactly what I'm trying to do here. As you guys know recently, I did repair this. When I picked this up, I dragged it and uh, this thing broke. So I had actually uh, taken this whole thing off and I welded it. And now it works right, uh, turning left and right. But if you look over here, the ski is uh, secured on with simply a bolt through this hole. Well, if I jack this up, take that bolt out, I'll have two holes to stick that galvanized rod bolt through there, attach the wheel somehow with some sleeves and spacers, and that would be one side fixed. I could roll this freely. As a matter of fact, you know, temporarily, I could actually just drive this on the road slowly. At least, at least be able to drive it, you know? This old Craftsman jack doesn't really work anymore. I mean, it, it jacks up and everything, but then after a little while, it starts losing its hydraulics and it goes down again. I have to jack this up and put like a jack stand under it or something. All right. So now I'll uh, take off that cotter pin over there, get the screw off, take this bolt off, take the ski off.
Okay, another half hour later, and I got some four inch wheels. These are from like the fronts of my uh, Toros 616Z and also some riding mowers. Look, we got a little bit of clearance there now and they're on there much better. Same goes with this one. See, we've got some clearance there at least. It's not rubbing. It's not rubbing even when it's on, you know, uh, the, the ground, not on jacks. So that's, it's weight bearing right there. So it's got some clearance. I don't think the turning radius is gonna be very good, but some wide turns. Look at that, huh? We've got some wheels on here now. I'm stoked. Holds air, I put some air in there. Now this thing should, this should drive. Uh, of course I have to make very wide turns, but it's cool. This way at least we can probably ride it a little. So it's the next day. I got this pulled out a little bit forward of my garage because I plan on driving it today. That's right. Um, I want to show you something. So overnight, the wheels held air. I cleaned up a little bit. Got the uh, duct tape residue rubbed off with some uh, brake cleaner. It's looking a little better. Uh, I took off the uh, brown thing. Where, where is it? Uh, I took off the brown thing because I, I thought it looked kind of goofy. <laughs> and then I got another product review and inside the box was this insulation. Uh, this is a little bit wider so and a little bit more uh, less bulky, looks lower profile. Um, I mean, it still looks, you know, kind of funny, but, um, and also it, there's a space on the bottom here, so it's not as comfortable as the backing, of course. Now, I have this thing here that I've had for about a year. It's a gaming chair, and it's made to be a rocker, right? So you use it to, you can rock forward and backwards, whatever. I haven't touched it or sat in it for like a year it just takes up space so what if i what if i cut the back off of that that looks a lot more comfortable and lower profile it's pretty heavy though i don't know why it's heavy <laughs> i think it has like an amp or a speaker built into it you know i feel like this thing can come off and if this thing can come off i could use the backrest And this could be it. This would be way better than that. That would look more, this would look more stock. Oh, the pain in the balls. Get this off. That, that looks much better as it is. Like that or like this? Maybe like that. See, this fits better because of the width. It's, al it's almost perfect. This looks kind of ugly, but huh, whatever. Maybe that. Oh, yeah. It's not as comfortable as the brown thing, believe it or not. Brown thing's really cushy. But, uh... This looks better because it fits, you know, the width. I think I'm going to go with this.
you guys think, huh? That looks way better than before. However, you have this transition area from the gas tank to the seat, right? I uh, use a staple gun and to put this back onto this uh, wood part. This is the part that actually it contours onto here and there. So I'm thinking I could take this insulation that I had, right? And I'll put that like, like that, right? And I'll cut this to shape just so it, you know, does a little bit of a fill. So I'll have to just cut it by eyeball and eh? way better, huh? Way better than this. <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty good man i mean pretty good if i wanted to go crazy i would take the uh covering of the bottom part there and cover this but then there'd be a lot of wrinkles here how would i secure it you know it's leave it that's it it's good enough got a bungee cord holding this thing down or like they say in minnesota down yeah it's not as comfortable as that you know but Actually, I'm so short that <laughs> I'd be sitting on this thing mostly. <laughs> Not even that. It's good enough. Totally good enough. I, I mostly would be sitting on this thing. Hmm. Maybe I should take a covering and cover it. Just took that covering, I had this wire, did a crisscross thing. I had to leave this open because this has to go over here. I mean, you know. <laughs> Better than before, nice cushion. I should spray some adhesive here, but in case I need to remove the gas tank, you know. Look at that, huh? Cool. I'm gonna, oh, that's much better. I'm an upholsterer. Er, 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 er. Great. Looks kind of towed in. Isn't that cool? After how many months of working on this thing, this thing is finally outside and we're going to test drive it right now. I think I flooded it. Spark plugs are super wet. You're not gonna get spark when they're super wet. I just took it out, dried it off, pulled it a couple times, clear chamber. Unless we're not getting spark.
Okay, let's check for spark. Yep, there's spark. I can hear it. Here's the other spark plug. Yep, I can hear it. And the saw stuff is blowing out. There's plenty of fuel coming in. I didn't turn the stuff. So I don't get it, fellas. I don't know why it doesn't start all of a sudden. You guys remember where this wire went? I don't remember this wire being cut like that. Just sitting there. It's on this handlebar. It doesn't make any sense though because the switch is up and we're getting spark, which means it's not cut off, right? You're getting spark, you're getting fuel. It's plenty of compression, trust me. It's just not starting. It's not easy to pull either. Let's go over on this side here where the crankshaft is. I'm gonna show you something. Look at that. Here's a crankshaft. There's a cover, rubber grommet, that comes off. And, and exposes the nut, the crankshaft. could put a drill to that make it easier to start and I got to see which direction it goes if it goes counterclockwise we're out of luck because counterclockwise the drills don't go counterclockwise it goes counterclockwise <laughs> Drills don't go counterclockwise, they go clockwise. The only thing that goes backwards is an impact, which wouldn't work because you would take the nut off. What are you talking about, Henry? Of course it spins backwards. <laughs> I don't know where I was, what I was thinking. All right, let's uh, try cranking this by hand. Setting is not good enough. I need the power drill that you plug into the house. Yeah, that's that tells you look, it's smoking. It tells you how much compression this has. It's not going to work. Oh, why doesn't it start? I don't know, fellas. I've been pulling this a lot. Getting a blister on me fingers. Je ne sais pas pourquoi. I removed the spark plugs. They're super wet. So it's getting gas, you know? I'm going to pull this without spark plugs to get everything out of there. Spark plugs are super wet, so it's not getting spark.
I took both spark plugs out, cleaned it, dried it, dried the area there, pulled it to release anything that was in the combustion chamber, put the plugs back in, pulled it, and it turned over for one revolution. It went, that's it, that's it. But then I tried to prime it again, and then I pulled it a few more times, and it was hard to pull because it's not lubricated, right? So I primed it just once. And then I took the plugs back out and it's already wet. So if the plugs are wet, it's not going to ignite. It's only going to ignite when the plugs are dry. So then I primed it once, pulled it, and it won't start. Pulled it, pulled it so many times. I'm just spent, you know, and my hands hurt. And I've got a blister coming out over here. So that was very anticlimactic. I don't know. I can't figure it out, man. Got fuel, got major compression. I mean, the compression's great on this thing. And uh, we have spark. I tested it three times. We have good spark. NGK spark plugs. It just won't turn over. It turned over so easily before, I don't understand it. I just don't get it. What did I do to it that uh, causes it not, not to start now? Other than me poking a hole through the radiator, but I mean, that, that's, that shouldn't do anything. Uh, these wires were already cut, I guess, both of them. It uh, doesn't affect it, it's still a bit spark. I don't know, fellas. I'm Andy from Jericho. See, See you guys, guys next time on Motors and Blowers. Blowers.